This lecture is Section 21, Decisions about the Null Hypothesis in Making Sense of Statistics. So let's go back and review what the Null Hypothesis says. Uh, there's two statements. The first one is there is no true difference between two sample means in the population. The difference is zero. Uh, in other words, it is talking about the observed difference uh, between means, between the sample means, was created by random sampling error. So uh, the rest of this textbook uh, will be dealing with the test of the null hypothesis, and those are called significance tests. So a significance test yields a probability that the null hypothesis is true. And the symbol for probability is lowercase p italicized. Now, when you write this for homework, uh, you will want to put that it is a lowercase p italicized, or you will want to make sure that your symbol for probability, P, is italicized in your homework. Uh, follow that, and you will not miss the answer for the homework. So if a researcher finds in a study that the probability that the null hypothesis is true with a probability of less than 5 in 100. And as you see, probability is less than 0 0.05. That is less than 5 in 100. What exactly does this statement mean? How should we interpret this statement? Uh, what also does it indicate about the null hypothesis? Well, it is actually indicating that it is unlikely that the null hypothesis is true. So we as researchers should probably conclude that the null hypothesis is probably not true. So we should conclude that the null hypothesis is probably not true if P or the probability is less than 0 0.05. So we need to also understand how to interpret P values. Uh, so let's think about it from a perspective of it being a uh, weather report. So let's say that a weather reporter says that the probability of rain tomorrow is less than 5 in 100. And, and so what does that mean? It's less than 5 in 100. Well, so what should we understand? There is some chance of rain, uh, first of all, is less than 5 in 100. So there is some chance of rain. Uh, it is small, and because of the low probability, most people would guess that it's not going to rain. So if you see the weather report, and the weather report says, well, it's a 5% chance of rain, which is what it means in less than 5 and 100. It's less than a 5% chance of rain. Uh, would, you, would you think it was going to rain? Uh, would you take your umbrella? Uh, most people would say, well, it's not going to rain. Uh, I'm not going to take my umbrella. It's less than 5%. Uh, so no one would make a special preparation for rain. Now, if you do not take your umbrella, then what you have essentially done is you have rejected the hypothesis that it will rain tomorrow. And so similar to that, uh, when there is a low probability that the null hypothesis is correct, researchers usually reject the null. However, there is always some 
probability that the null hypothesis is true. So uh, if we wait for a, a certainty, uh, we can't make a decision. So maybe you would take your umbrella anyway. Uh, maybe you would do like I do. You leave one in your car and one in your office. Uh, it, it makes sense. Then, then you are, uh, you know, you are prepared. Okay, so when we look at point zero five, and let's talk about the the key, uh, the last part of the statement of probability is less than point zero five. So point zero five is uh, five times out of a hundred. Um, and researchers have settled on the point zero five level as the most conventional level at which it is appropriate to make a decision to reject the null hypothesis. Now, remember, if we wait for certainty, we'll never be able to make a decision. So what, what we are saying with, with settling on a conventional level of 0 0.05, as the appropriate level to make a decision to reject the null, is that there, we as researchers are willing to be wrong five times in 100 when rejecting the null. So we're also looking to consider the rain forecast. If we do not take our umbrella or we're not prepared for rain during 100 days when the probability of rain is 0 0.05, it will most likely rain for five of those 100 days. So in rejecting the null hypothesis, we are taking a risk of getting wet five days out of 100. And we made a type 1 error. We rejected the null hypothesis when it was true or correct. So on those five days out of a hundred, we will get wet because we made five type one errors. Now, when we talk about uh, synonyms, we talk about rejecting the null. We declare the results statistically significant. So uh, in academic journals, what we would say uh, is the difference between the means is statistically significant at the 0 0.05 level. And what this means, uh, as, as shows below, the researcher has rejected the null hypothesis because the probability of it being truth is 5 or less in 100. Now, p-values a lot of times in journals will also not only find the p-values of less than 0 0.05, uh, we will find that the most common uh, along with that or probably uh, that the p-value is less than 0 0.01, which is less than 1 in 100, and the p-value is less than 0 0.001, which is less than 1 in 1,000. So when we're looking at uh, this particular slide, we need to uh, remember that we have various uh, p-value levels. Um, this, this particular slide is going to be very important for you as you go through the remainder of the textbook. Now, let's look at the 0 0.06 uh, p value level, the probability level. Now, any time that you see p is um, at the 0 0.06 level or above, the results are not significant and we do not, as researchers, reject the null hypothesis. Now, when we are looking at the 0 0.05 level, now remember we've said that 0 0.05 is significant. Um, and we can declare uh, a result as statistically significant. Um, this also indicates that we as researchers reject the null hypothesis. Now, let's move to the 0 0.01 level. 
And the 0 0.01 level is a higher level of significance than the 0 0.05 level so we have it's more significant so as researchers we reject the null hypothesis with more confidence than at the 0 0.05 level now with the 0 0.01 level uh, we now can say that we reject it with more confidence now let's look at the the highest level uh, that is highly significant and remember we're talking about the lower the probability the higher the level of significance so a 0 0.001 level is higher than a 0 0.01 level higher than a 0 0.05 level uh, is in significance so at the 0 0.001 level it is highly significant the results are highly significant and we reject the null hypothesis with more confidence than at the 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 levels. So let's now uh, turn ourselves to um, to our uh, inferential statistics and the probability or our, our P uh, referring to the probability of making a type 1 error. So we're, all, we're going to look at a type 1 error and a type to error. So let's understand the difference between a type 1 and a type 2. Let's look at example number 1 which is an example of a type 1. So the mean self-concept in a population of girls is 50 and the mean self-concept in a population of boys is 50. So the two populations are and remember this part on average equal. Now a researcher draws a random sample of girls and a random sample of boys and observes a mean of 52 for girls and a mean of 48 for boys. So the inferential statistic test indicates that P is less than 0 0.05. So here you have the symbol P is less than 0 0.05. So the researcher rejects the null hypothesis. Now unknowingly the researcher has made a type 1 error because they have rejected the null hypothesis which correctly states that there is no difference between the population means. Now let's look at an example of a type 2 error. The mean uh, arithmetic or math reasoning test score in a population of girls is 20 and the mean in a population of boys is 18. Thus the two populations are on average not equal. So a researcher draws a random sample of girls and a random sample of boys and observes a mean of 21 for the girls and a mean of 19 for the boys. An inferential statistical test is conducted and it indicates that P is greater than 0 0.05. So as a researcher look back at uh, page 114 in your text if P is greater than 0 0.05 then we indicate that it is not significant and we do not reject the null hypothesis. So unknowingly as a researcher we have now made a type 2 error because we have not rejected the null which incorrectly states there is no difference between the population means. Okay, now this is the biggest and most important thing to remember. The researcher does not know the population means nor do they know that an error has been made by making decisions on the values of P. So we have no idea as researchers what the population means are. Now remember um, population means that we have to have the entire population surveyed. We have to know everything about the population and, and realistically we just cannot do that. We, we cannot do that. Um, so, so in review, 
uh, let's look at the two types of errors that may be made when making a decision about the null hypothesis. So the two errors that we can make is we can make a type 1 error, which is rejecting the null hypothesis when in reality it is true, or a type 2 error, which is failing to reject the null hypothesis when in reality it is false. Now, this is very frustrating as a researcher sometimes that we've done our best. We're still faced with making um, two types of errors. But by using probabilities, a lot of times um, what we are doing is we're making very informed decisions uh, in the face of uncertainty. Now, either decision about the null hypothesis could be wrong. Uh, it may be wrong, but by using inferential statistics and by using probabilities uh, in the face of uncertainties, uh, we're making calculated decisions that are consistent with the probabilities. So many, many, many times what we will do uh, is we, we look across a group of studies on a topic, we isolate errors regarding the null hypothesis, and a lot of times these are washed out by the majority of other studies. So, um, you know, using the probabilities uh, makes it very likely that the majority of studies on any given topic are correct in either rejecting or not rejecting the null hypothesis. Now this ends uh, section 21, decisions about the null hypothesis. Um, in this section and previous sections, uh, the emphasis has been used in comparing uh, means and using probabilities and comparing means because this is one of the most common uses for inferential statistics. Uh, the next four, uh, four sections will give more information on statistical tests of significance for means. And in addition, frequencies are compared. And so uh, we'll be looking uh, forward to the rest of the inferential statistics um, information in the, the next uh, few sections.